Welcome back to the Real Life Moms podcast, where moms come to you for inspiration and tools to create the life that they desire. I am Lisa Foster, and I am here with Danielle LaShawn. She is a mother of four, a content creator, an author, and is passionate about helping women achieve their goals and dreams by making daily deposits in themselves. So thank you, Danielle, for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. I can't wait to just share more about what I've been up to and hopefully help some moms out there <laughs> to become the best versions of themselves. Well, I'm excited. And I think the mom you may help today might be me. <laughs> so thank you <laughs> ahead of time. <laughs> so I, I'm really excited to kind of dig into this, making small deposits every day. I know that's a big theme for you, but before we jump right into that, if you can tell us a little bit about your background, but also like how you even came up to create this idea of making deposits. Yeah. So I am, like you mentioned, a mom of four. I was actually a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. So I went from having one child to having four kids as a stay-at-home mom. And a few years ago, I was like really unhappy with just only being a mom. I was like, this is not, <laughs> this cannot be life. Like I, there's more to life for me and I'm not going to settle for this. So I just started trying to figure out my next steps and planning my path. And over time, I came up with kind of a strategy for developing and relearning myself. And that's what I share in my book. And the way that I kind of broke it down into small pieces was to make daily deposits, like you mentioned. So what it is, is essentially you're just trying to do small things every day that will get you to where you want to go. And also kind of outlining how you want your life to look so you know what direction to go in. Mm. I love that you kind of found yourself in this situation and say, okay, there has to be more. Because I think a lot of us do that. <laughs> but don't. Yeah, 100%. Don't, <laughs> yeah, we don't take the steps though to, to change it. We just think that's just the way it is. And that's not good for anybody. Yeah, and I think that the part of the problem is that we are conditioned <laughs> as women, I think, and especially as mothers to be okay. If you're not struggling, if you have food on the table, if you have, you know, your bills are paid, then you should be happy with where you are. You're, especially as a stay-at-home mom, you're lucky. Like you're in the position that people would kill to be in. You don't have to go to work every day. So why are you not happy with your life? So I struggled with that guilt around like not being satisfied with what I had when I had what I needed. Quote unquote, had what I needed. I had what I needed on paper but I didn't have what I needed to fulfill myself. Mm -hmm. And that was where that internal struggle kind of came in. And when I decided to do something different and kind of pivot for my life. And it's, it's interesting you're saying that because I, I, I worked part-time when my kids were young. So I felt lucky as well because I had the mm -hmm. best of both worlds, but I'll be honest, like going to work, I would always say it was my day off because staying home <laughs> with the kids. Oh my God. Like I have two and they're yes. wonderful. They're not hard kids at all, but there is no lunchtime. There's no there breaks. No there's no, there's nothing right. Or, and no uh -huh. adult conversation. So it really felt like you were on 24 seven, but when I went to work, I, I could sit down. I could have lunch with other adults. Like it's a different world. And both of them have their stressors, right? But it's just a different kind of stress. Now you did write this book, right? Called Make a Deposit, which is kind mm -hmm. of a guide for moms who've kind of lost their identity to kind of have yeah. these actionable steps to, you know, find themselves basically. So mm -hmm. first, before we jump into that, um, can you define actually what a deposit is? Because we're throwing the word around, <laughs> but oh, yeah. I don't even know if anybody knows what it is. Yeah, I forget that people don't really, they haven't been introduced <laughs> yeah. to that concept. But yeah, a deposit is any action that you take that will move you in the direction you want to go. So once you've established what's good for you as an individual, a deposit is anything that's going to move you toward that. So anything that's good for you. And, you know, obviously a withdrawal would be anything that's going to take you away from it. And then we also talk about in the book how both are good and both are necessary because deposits, although they're the good things that kind of move you in the right direction, you can't, obviously you can't do the good things every single day, all day, because they're no fun. 
usually. <laughs> so you need kind of that break and those fun moments with your withdrawals. You just have to make sure that you're balancing, you know, your bank statement. <laughs> right. And you are not making so many withdrawals that you're bankrupting yourself and you're making enough deposits that you're kind of, you know, building. Mm -hmm. I love that concept of almost like that we're a bank and you have to put deposits in before you can mm -hmm. withdraw, right? Yeah, it's very similar to a work to a, a regular bank account. You know, you have to make your deposits, you have to make your withdrawals every now and then. And, you know, at the end of the day, you should still have something left in your bank. If you have healthy finances, there's something left in your bank at the end of the day. If you have healthy a healthy mindset around you and your life and your individuality, there needs to be something left in your bank at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So can you share a little bit with us, like some of these guidelines, some of these things that you point out in your book that can help us make these deposits? Well, in the book, there, in each chapter has actionable steps. So from chapter one, you are making deposits and throughout each chapter, there are like I said, actionable steps. So after the first few paragraphs, you're going to make your first deposit, which is in the first chapter is just congratulating yourself for even being here and being a good mom and caring enough about your kids and yourself to even be reading the book. Mm -hmm. And then um, it kind of goes more into, let's take the focus off your kids, put the focus on you. What do you want? And mm -hmm. even if you don't know what that is yet, what are some things that you know are good for you that you can start to do every day? And then it just kind of snowballs from there. We're going to get a little deeper and a little deeper. And then we kind of graduate to creating a vision for our lives. And there's an, a really great example inside the book that is kind of maybe like a two page long letter about what you could want your life to look like. It's just an example, one that I wrote a very close match to mine that I wrote for myself. And that's the goal for you to write that for yourself, like a three or five year vision and just try to get your life as close to that, that vision as you can mm. after, you, after you've written it. Oh, well, it sounds amazing. I mean, I love how you just say congratulate yourself from the get-go, right? Because making the decision to take the time, even if it's as simple as reading this book, right? Mm -hmm. Let alone making these little deposits is huge. And we should take a moment to, to congratulate ourselves for doing just that step. Yeah, it's so important because I feel like it's just, it's one of those things that people are like, well, you should, you should do that. <laughs> you have these kids and it's your responsibility and you are, you're supposed to be making sure there's food on the table every day. You're supposed to be making sure that your house is clean and laundry is done and that, you know, you've read bedtime stories and brushed teeth and washed faces and, you know, done all the things, put the heads back on the Barbies when they decapitate them and you pick the gum off the shoes and you, <laughs> you went to soccer practice, you baked for the school bake sale and all those things. But really, no, that's not, I mean, even if it is what you're supposed to do, so what? You still should congratulate yourself for doing it because there's a lot of people who don't, one, and because it's a lot of hard work for mm -hmm. two. So. Yeah, I'm all about taking those small victories and making sure that you're really, you know, saying, you know what, I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm doing a great job. My kids are happy and it's okay to take that time to make yourself happy too. Yeah. So for the moms that are listening, what do you want to kind of tell them? Like if they're kind of in this stage that you were, where they're mm -hmm. home or home and working and they're just kind of feeling that little lost in motherhood, getting sucked into what I call the vortex of motherhood. Yeah. And they're trying to kind of climb out of there and trying to maybe take those first few steps and doing something for themselves. What What do you recommend for them? Hmm. I think, first of all, you deserve whatever you want in life. And don't feel guilty about wanting more than what you have. And um it's okay to reach for the stars. You're not, it's not too late for you. <laughs> you can mm -hmm. go wherever you want to go and you can still be a good mom at the same time. And let's start, let's get started. Let's just start moving in the right direction. You don't need to know every single step of your journey to begin it. You don't mm -hmm. need to know where you're going to end up. You don't need to know how you're going to get there. You don't even need to know exactly where you want to end up. You just need to know what you can do right now to start moving in a different direction, to start positioning yourself for that next level, because once you unlock the next level, 
then, you know, you start to unlock the sec the third level, then you start to unlock the fourth level, but you only need to get to the, you only need to get on the path to the first level that you need to unlock. Yeah. I think that's such an important statement because I think what happens a lot of the time is that we look, you know, it's everything so grand. It's so big. You have to get to that end stage. Like if I don't know how to get to that point, whatever that point is, mm -hmm. um, it's almost like, well, I'm not going to do it at all. Right. <laughs> but you yeah. don't need to know that. Yeah. And I find that I'm that way in a lot of things in life. <laughs> I'm very all or nothing in a lot mm -hmm. of, in a lot of ways, but with this, it was just so important to me that I not feel that way anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was just kind of one of those things where I was more, more scared to stay the same than I was to change. And I think when you reach that point, that's when you know, you know, something's going to have to change. Either you're going to change it or it's going to change for you. The universe is going to change it for you. You're going to move or it's going to move you. Mm -hmm. So once you get to that point and you, you decide that you're going to move, it gets a little bit easier to keep going. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So I'd rather have the choice of how I wanted to move than someone moving mm -hmm. it for me. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people just stay there because it's comfortable, even mm -hmm. though you might not like it where you are. Sometimes there's comfort in the familiar. So uh, you just have to go. If you're not comfortable, you may just have to make that decision for yourself to go ahead and do something different. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're not, it's not going to feel good the whole time. It's probably not going to feel good most of the time because change just doesn't feel good, but it will feel good when you're done or when you're well into the process and you can start to see the fruits of your labor come to fruition. It'll definitely be worth it in the end. So just start, <laughs> just get, yeah. just get started because it's so worth it on the other side of your fear. So tell me some of your maybe like actionable steps to get yourself to get out of that comfort zone and how you got yourself moving forward? So for me, it was getting consistent with my YouTube channel. It became getting a job because for us, it was, for me, it was like a debt-free journey. Uh, we were in the process of buying a house. So that was, you know, one of the things was one of my major goals was to buy a house so the debt-free journey and then the, the saving and then the reading books to get more well-versed in how to properly maintain my finances. And then ultimately working <laughs> because we, I ended up having to get a job to, for us to get our house because of, the, because of COVID and all the things that happened and the price increases and the um, global supply chain issues. There's just a lot that was happening at that time. So it just... It just kind of snowballed and it was, that's the thing. Success is not linear. It's very much zigzag. Or like if you give a two-year-old a, a pen and a piece of paper and they just kind of scribble, that's what it looks like. It's not a straight line. <laughs> Cause I could never have imagined that all this would transpire from me starting something, but that's just the way that it happened. I ended up reaching the goal, but it didn't look anything like I thought it would. Mm -hmm. The process looked nothing like I, like I imagined. So that's another thing that I would definitely highlight <laughs> is that you cannot predict the way you'll get there. But if you just move confidently in the direction that you want to go, you will get there. Okay. I love that even more because <laughs> what I'm hearing is it's kind of like you want to have an idea of a goal. And I think for your goal, is it, was it your YouTube channel, which I have to highlight because you have how many subscribers? I saw it and it's like off the charts, by the way. Like how many are there? <laughs> it's over 60,000 at this point. Um, but yeah, that and that's still a goal of mine. I still have not mastered how to get people locked in on my YouTube channel consistently. So that is still one of my goals. That's an amazing goal. Amazing, right? So you had this goal of this YouTube channel where you are helping a lot of moms and women out there. I, I've actually looked at it. So people should go check it out and we'll have that in the show notes later. But also I love that you say, it's like you want a goal, but there are so many paths to take to get there. And I think that's why we have to highlight, we don't need to necessarily know the how. Because mm -hmm. I think if you think you know the how, <laughs> then you're less flexible because you're you're going to have to weave. You're going to have to do that scribble that you just said, because mm -hmm. there are things that come up. There are twists and turns, and those aren't bad. Sometimes they even help you get there even better. 
than you thought you would. So, um, so I think yeah. it sounds like first start with a goal. The reason why I'm hesitant to say that is because I know some people don't quite know yet. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to be, you know, a grand master life altering goal. It just needs to be any goal, <laughs> like literally anything. It could be wake up for the next week at 6 a.m. So I have an hour to myself before the kids have to go to school to plan my goals. Mm -hmm. It could be make sure I'm putting them down for a nap at a certain time every day. Just make sure I'm being consistent in something so I can make time for myself and I can plan my goals. That can be your first goal, literally. Yeah. It does not need to be anything crazy. First goal could be finding a goal, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, that's, and yeah, creating exactly. the space or time to have that. Now, the space mm -hmm. or time that you're saying, like, getting up early or putting your kids down for a nap. Is that the deposit piece? Is that like actually making the space like a deposit for you? Is, do you consider that? Yeah, that could definitely be a deposit. And the reason why I say a deposit for you is because it'll look different for everybody. Like for me, if your deposit is to eat an apple a day, but I'm allergic, then eating an apple a day for me is not a deposit. It's a withdrawal because it's going to hurt me. Your deposits are anything that's going going to help you move in the right direction and you have to define your own deposits. There are certain things that, you know, most that will be a deposit for almost everyone, but then there are certain things that will not. It's going to be very individual and very tailored to who you are, what you believe and who you want to be. So you have to really sit down and define what is going to be a deposit for you. And also one of the things that we do a few times throughout the book is track our progress. So you can take a whole day and just kind of write down all the things that you do and categorize them as either deposit or withdrawal and then tally that up at the end of the, of the day like how many deposits did I make how many withdrawals did I make what do I need to change you really have to be intentional about getting to the root of what's stopping you from going forward so you mm -hmm. have to know where you're how you're spending your time what you're doing how much how much time did I spend scrolling how much time did I spend helping the kids with homework? How much time did I spend cooking or cleaning or doing laundry? How much time did I spend watching TV? Mm -hmm. That's another activity that we do. That's another one of those uh, deposits that we make inside the book is really seeing where we're spending our time, seeing how many deposits and withdrawals we're making every day. And there's also a companion piece to the book, which is a journal, and it kind of expands on each deposit. So whereas in the book, the deposit might be two uh, maybe a paragraph or two sentences long in the journal it's going to be three paragraphs long it's going to really expand on it and it's going to be give you a space to write everything it has um, tables for all the cate categorization and everything that we're doing with um, tracking everything it has everything that you need to really go through the process in depth so I recommend that if anyone's going to get the book also get the journal just because it's really going to help you to stay on track and have somewhere to kind of house all these activities and um, exercises that we're doing in the book. Mm -hmm. But I think it's super, super important to make sure that you know how you're spending your time, what you're doing and what activities are going to help you move forward or what's holding you back. Yeah. What is your favorite exercise that you talk about in your book? Oh, there's so many good ones. <laughs> I think what the one that I just said is probably probably my favorite when you really just sit down and take a whole day or whole week to just see how you're what you're doing and how you're spending your time because it's so it tells you so much about your, about yourself because you don't realize actually that's one of the things I did <laughs> when I was like really on my journey I had a spreadsheet like an actual Excel spreadsheet that I used to cat to just kind of say, okay, I spent an hour here, I spent forty minutes here, I spent twenty minutes here, and I just really had like wrote exactly what I did all day long. And then when I looked back at it, I was like, oh, okay. So that's why, <laughs> that's why I feel like I don't have time. Cause I was on Instagram for two hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I would say that when you do that, do not do anything differently. Like don't just spend your day exactly how you normally spend your day and see where you're spending your time. Cause it'll give you a lot of insight into what you could be doing differently and how you could be more productive because it feels like there's not enough hours in a day, but when you really break it down you have a lot more hours than you think you have, mm -hmm. you just aren't really being productive with the time you have. And it doesn't take that long to change your life. 
it really doesn't take eight hours a day to change your life. Like you could really change your life in about two hours, three hours a day if you're consistent and you really put that time in and you're really intentional about devoting your time to the right things. Mm. So let's talk about withdrawals because a lot of, there are a lot of those that come up and I think people will focus on that a bit. So how do you get around those? Like if you are somebody who just has a lot of those going on in your life yeah, <laughs> and, and, and there might be have to's, right? Like, so maybe you are the person who has to care for everybody in your family. You're getting dinner. You're maybe you're also working and you just have all this, but you can't afford to get somebody to help you do anything. So how do you, what do you tell parents to do for that? So first, I think it's really important to kind of put a system in place and get get everyone on a schedule. (laughs) And I'm terrible at this. So I'm a hypocrite for saying this. But I think if you are really struggling with making time for yourself so you can make those deposits, it's going to be super important to try, at least try to get your kids on a schedule so you can get them in bed by a certain time and they are not you can just get them away from you for a little while (laughs) so you can have some time to yourself. So if you could do that, and I feel like a lot of parents, especially millennial parents these days are really big on bedtimes. Mm -hmm. I'm still not there yet. My kids, (laughs) and for me, it's because I like to have my mornings to myself. Mm -hmm. So I let my kids stay up late because I want them to sleep until noon (laughs) so that they can start school after that. And I can focus on me in the morning. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, if you have to work in the morning, then it's going to be super important to get them in bed by a certain time in the evenings so that you can, first of all, just have a breather and unwind. And second, um, have that time for yourself so you can at least have an hour to unpack (laughs) your day and then kind of delve into what you want to do for yourself. I I agree. Like finding those, I like to call them quiet spaces. Like they are Mm -hmm. there you might have to create some, but sometimes they're, yeah. they're there. If your kids are starting to get older, they can play for a little bit by themselves. They're like playing mm-hmm. with Legos. You don't have to necessarily entertain the whole time. I like mornings as well. I'm an early bird. So my quiet time mm-hmm. had always come like at four or five, eight in the morning, but I get yeah. a lot done. It's my most creative time. Nobody is up because I have tea and stuff. So everyone's sleeping. Um, But even when they were younger, I did it too. And that was my space. And it was really like, I tell everybody, do not talk to me till, you know, 637. Like, let me have my hour and a half to get the stuff done I I need to get done. And that's where I put most of my deposits probably in and my creativity and things like that. I'm the same way. I have to get, I just naturally, since I had my first child, I naturally wake up at like 6 a.m. every day. So Mm -hmm they wouldn't, even if they were starting school at like nine, they still wouldn't be up that early. (laughs) So for Mm -hmm. me, that would always be my quiet time. And I would probably intentionally wake up even an hour earlier just to make sure I had even more time to myself because I just need that. I cannot function without that time to myself in the morning. Um, And I don't care about having time to myself in the evenings, but like you said, there's always, there's always some sort of time that you can spend on yourself. I think that most of us, especially with social media, we spend so much of it there. We devote so much of it to our phones and scrolling and you got to put that phone down or at least use your phone to read a book (laughs) or give yourself some sort of, um, and actually this is a whole nother deposit that I really love. And it was coming up with a list of, or kind of like outlining some positive social media sources or podcasts that you can listen to, things like different uh, YouTube channels that you can watch that are positive, just things that are going to pour into you. So identify things like that, like maybe have a list of one podcast, one YouTube channel, one book, and one radio station or something like a morning show or something that you like to listen to that is going to be positive for you, that's going to pour into you, that's going to be a deposit for you. And limit yourself to those four things <laughs> mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks or, you know, at least devote an hour or two to those, uh, to those things. If you're going to do social media and if you're going to do TV, make sure mm-hmm. you're watching the right things and giving yourself the right things to fuel yourself so that you're motivated because the things that we feed ourselves make such a difference in how we move. And if you're not giving yourself the right things, that's food, that's um, the things that you're consuming as far as social media and just any sort of content, 
you are not going to be your best self. So that's another deposit that I really, really love and that I would recommend that anybody start as soon as possible. Yep. And I feel, I love those too, because you can intertwine those. Like I personally will listen to a podcast. I love learning. So not necessarily history. Okay. (laughs) But like learning how to do things, learning about how to Uh podcast or SEOs or things like that, you know, or medical things, because I'm in that field. But I listen to podcasts while I walk every morning. That's one of the things I do or a book, um, an audio book. I also listen while I'm cleaning. So even though Mm -hmm. cleaning might take some deposits away, but I'm also filling my bucket at the same time. And so I I love that. I love listening to something, whether it's podcast or a book. It does. It totally fills me. I always feel very productive after. And it's, and it could also be done while I'm technically doing a withdrawal. No, actually cleaning would be a deposit. If you, if, for me, cleaning is a deposit. Anything that's going to help with my overall well-being and the well-being of my family is in, is a deposit. So cleaning, cooking, the things that are withdrawals are like eating out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, you know, the things that are actually bad for you, things that you know are not good for you, but you, they're just fun to do. They just taste good. They feel good. They oh, look good. It's... Like those things are the withdrawals, but Things that are that contribute to your well being are not not withdrawals. So I don't want you to take it that way. Well, it's funny because it feels like a withdrawal to me. So it's so funny, like, oh, that's a deposit for you and a withdrawal for me. Cause I'm like, no, cleaning withdrawal. Like <laughs> definitely cooking. Do not enjoy. <laughs> but if I don't enjoy it, it's a withdrawal, right? Like it doesn't make me feel like happy. So, and that's the thing, like, I feel like, okay, so you get to define your own deposits and your own withdrawals, but I personally feel like the things that are not fun are the most, most likely that is kind of the gauge for me as to whether or whether or not something is a deposit, because if it's not fun, it's usually a deposit in my mind, <laughs> because it's something like doctor's appointments. They're not fun, but yeah. they're necessary. They're good for you. Dentist yeah. appointments, cleaning, cooking. I, I mean, it's so much more fun and easy to go order takeout, but Cooking is better for you. It's better to have a home cooked meal that, you know, is prepared with love. <laughs> mm. But yeah, the to me, that's usually how I gauge whether or not something is a deposit or withdrawal. Okay. So well, this is good clarity because it's more <laughs> about is it good for your overall well-being and health, correct? Mm-hmm. Versus is it fun and I enjoy it? Right. Is that right? Well, yeah. And I think that um, if it's not, and that's the thing, like it's interchangeable because sometimes going out with your friends is going out with your friends is a deposit. Like if you've been in the cooped up in the house and you need to go have a drink, <laughs> that is a deposit. It's good for your well being right now mm-hmm. to go do that. If you do it too much, it becomes a withdrawal because it is not helping you, not necessarily helping you to continue to do that on a regular basis and spend that money and drink alcohol. And you know what I mean? Like certain things just aren't, it's moderation Mm -hmm. is the best word. (laughs) Like we need those moments of of reprieve and we need to like be away from the kids and have fun and do those things, but it's not necessarily helping you reach a goal. Things that contribute to your overall well being, but also get you closer to your goals. Okay. So thinking of a deposit, this is good because I was confused, right? Thinking of a deposit as really having a goal and and what would bring you closer to that. And that might be eating home because it's healthier. And maybe Mm -hmm. my goal is to decrease my cholesterol (laughs) or something, right? right? Um, So that's how you want to think of it. I'm just thinking of the deposits are fun things, right? Like (laughs) they should be so fun. And yes, it sounds like they should be fun or could be fun as well, especially if you You want to bring more joy. Like, yeah, if your goal is I want to be more joy and happy and more laughter to my life, because honestly, I could use that as well. Then going out for that drink with your friend definitely would bring me closer to that goal. Maybe not all the time, but yes. Okay. That is, I'm so glad we clarified that. Yeah. And that's interesting because it really is going to depend on what your goal is. So it's going to be very individual for you. Like for me, going out to eat is not a deposit because I know I would, I need to be on a weight loss journey (laughs) and on a fitness journey and just working on my health in general. So yeah, for me, that would not be a a deposit, but for you, you could 
100% be a deposit. Yeah. For me, it yeah. would be one of those fun withdrawals that is kind of like the, you know, okay, I've been on, I've been doing really well. I've been, you know, doing the things I'm supposed to do. And now it's time for a little bit of fun. I can afford a withdrawal now. Now I'm going to go out with my friends and have a night of fun. So, yeah. But going out with my friends to a class, like a workout class would be a, a deposit mm -hmm. and also fun. Right. So that would be a good one. Yeah, it's like, it's going to be very individual. You have to define it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I, I think for myself too, but for a lot of parents, figuring out your goal, I can imagine being really difficult. Like what is mm -hmm. the goal? And I know they don't have to be so big, but are there exercises that you recommend for someone just to even figure out their goal that they're going to work on? Yeah, um, I believe the one of the first deposits in the book is just listing out five things that you would like for yourself. And it can be literally anything, any five things or three things. You can start with three things that you really want for yourself or three things you want to change about your life right now. And that'll give you a really good starting point for what you can kind of center your first goals around. Because if you know what you don't want, you can kind of think in opposites at that point. So if I don't like, um, Weight is just a really easy one. And it's one that most of us have experienced. So if I don't like the current size I am, I, what can I do on the opposite end of the spectrum to kind of change that? Or if I don't like the amount of time I uh, don't get to spend having fun with my kids versus always like being the strict mom and always being the disciplinarian, how can I, what's the opposite of that? Like, how can we have more fun? Can we do activities with them? Can we maybe Halloween's coming up, maybe we can do a DIY or something like, it's just thinking, okay, this is what I'd have that I don't like. What can I do that's the opposite of that, that I will like instead? Mm -hmm. What what would be better than what I have right now or what I'm doing right now? Yeah. So, okay. Where can the listeners find you? Where can they find this incredible book that you have <laughs> that has all these <laughs> deposits that we can figure out? Yeah, um, the book is available on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, and it's everything's on my website. And you can find me um, on my website at bydaniellelashawn.com um, and on YouTube at Danielle LaShawn and on TikTok at Danielle LaShawn underscore underscore. <laughs> awesome. And we'll have that in the show notes as well. So listeners can just Thank jump you. in there. So what do you want to tell moms like just listening today? What do you want them to hear? I think what I would say is you are in control. You have the power to change your life. It is not happening to you. Things are happening for you. So when you decide to, it's really all about that mindset shift. Like if you decide that you want something and you start moving, <laughs> you're going to get there eventually. It might not be overnight. It, it will not be overnight. Sorry, it will not be overnight. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some effort, but you will get there. And if you need some help <laughs> with kind of figuring all this out, then definitely get a copy of the book. And you can always come to my YouTube channel and drop a comment on a video. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, and I hope that you guys are can get on your journeys really, really quickly and start to make some deposits and create the life you want. Yeah. Because although it's not easy, it's not as hard as you would imagine. Yeah, right. I think at the end of the day, what it all wraps up to is you have choices and let's mm -hmm. just start moving. <laughs> you yeah. know? Let's move. That's, so that's think, really, the, yeah, that's really what it boils down to. It's all about choices. So just start making some different ones and you'll be surprised how quickly those deposits begin to add up and you see some changes in your life as a result of those new decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to, now that I have, I have a whole new understanding of deposits, honestly. I was just, I was just going with joy here, but it's <laughs> a lot more, it's deposits towards a goal. And I think that is huge. So I, I'm going to work towards that as well. So thank you so much for coming on today. It was so helpful and I, I, I learned a lot. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm glad you were able to learn something and I'm, I'm learning too. I'm still learning because I'm still a work in progress too.